We've now discussed food retailers and we've also discussed general merchandise retailers. The last type of retailer we're going to talk about are the service retailers. Service retailers are firms that sell services rather than physical merchandise that we can see, touch, smell, feel. Service retailers include dry cleaning firms, car washes, oil changes, haircuts, airlines, banks, restaurants, video rental, and medical facilities. There are four main differences between service retailers and merchandise retailers that we're going to talk about today. And the first is intangibility. Customers cannot see, touch, or feel services. Therefore, they often have difficulty evaluating the quality of the service that they're receiving. It's very important for service retailers to place an emphasis on customer evaluations, on customer surveys, and customer feedback. That way, they can moderate the quality of the service that they are selling. A second difference is simultaneous production and consumption. Service providers deliver the service as the customer is consuming it. So what does this mean for the service retailer? Well, the quality can definitely vary. The provider has one chance to get it right because the customer has no chance to return a bad service. The third difference is perishability. Services cannot be saved, stored, or resold. Service retailers must match supply and demand exactly so that they don't lose revenue. Think about hotels. Hotels often lower the cost of the room during the week and increase the price of the room on the weekend. They lower the price of the room during the week to try to fill that room because any revenue is better than zero dollars of a room left unrented. Think about tax preparation retailers. They're often only open in March and April because that's when demand is highest. Movie theaters often suffer from perishability. If a seat in a theater is not sold, they lose the revenue they could have earned by selling that seat. Think of other types of retailers that suffer from perishability. How do they manage? The last difference that we're going to discuss is inconsistency. Products are produced on machines with a very tight quality control measure. Services are performed by people and no two people are the same, and therefore no two experiences sold by a service retailer are the same. People have different levels of knowledge, attitudes, and they treat people differently. What types of problems does inconsistency cause? Well, we just talked about that. Different outcomes. Is there a situation where inconsistency is acceptable? The answer would be yes. Think about a restaurant where you have a waiter who's serving an elderly couple and her next table over is a family of four with two young children. It's perfectly acceptable for her to treat those two tables differently. Think about a hairstylist. No two customers want the same hairstyle. They want inconsistency. So there are a lot of cases where inconsistency can be a good thing. What types of situations have you encountered where inconsistency is acceptable? The last topic we're going to cover in chapter two is retail ownership. There are three types of retail ownership that we need to be aware of. The first is an independent sing single store establishment. These are owner managed. Entrepreneurial activity is extensive in retail. 95% of retail establishments are independent single store establishments. Independent establishments have a lot of flexibility. They have flexibility in the products they sell and the hours they're open and in the customer service that they offer. They do have to be very adaptive. 
they must respond quickly to ever-changing customer needs, and they don't have support from a national retail corporate office to help be adaptive. They normally have higher priced merchandise, but they offset that for the customers by providing such high level of service. The second type of retail ownership we're going to discuss is through a corporate retail chain. A retail chain is a company that operates in multiple retail units under common ownership and has centralized decision making. Oftentimes corporate retail chains that we think of have a national office. Target, Walmart, Red Robin, McDonald's, those are all considered corporate retail chains. The last type of retail ownership we're going to talk about is franchising. A franchise is a contractual agreement between two parties. 30 to 40 percent of retail sales often happen at franchise locations. In a franchising agreement, the franchisor sells the rights to use a business trademark, a service mark, to the franchisee for a one-time fee and also an ongoing royalty fee. In fast food, we see a lot of franchises. Every Auntie Anne's pretzel store you see in a shopping mall is a franchise owned by a local owner. A lot of the restaurants here in Milligil are franchises. So something for you to think about. What are the pros and cons of managing a corporate retail chain store, a franchise store, and an independent retail location? This concludes our discussion on Chapter 2.